Well, guys, it is that time. This was a video that I didn't think I was going to have to make this soon, but after seeing the response and actually going out and doing the challenge myself, it appears that physical media is starting to die. And that's all I have to say about that. Um, for people that are unsure what that is, your DVDs, your Blu-rays, your disc games, any kind of physical media that you can collect, like all the stuff behind me. And the digital era is upon us. Now I got this idea because I recently had noticed that Gaming Off The Grid had did a video and, and Hey guys, Gaming Off The Grid here. And you're watching our fellow Iowan, Iowa Retro Gamer Dad. You know, it brought up a lot of good points and I agree completely with those guys. We have a little bit of differences in some of the stuff because simply they are more of a collect more collectors than I am. And I'm kind of in between stuff right now, but there was a lot of good points. And they popped up a whole bunch of pictures and videos and stuff of their local Targets, their local Walmarts and stuff. And the shelves and everything were picked absolutely clean. There was barely anything there, even new games and stuff like that. They were not there at all, guys. And, you know, them being from Iowa as well, it was really crazy to see how there was nothing there. Now, we all know this was going to come. I mean, we all knew that the way that they are moving the markets, they are putting stuff out there, they are pr allowing pre-orders for stuff. But for some reason, when you order physicals, they aren't showing up the same day of... Um, they are shutting down services like the Wii U shop and everything so that way, you know, the servers are no longer there and everything and then they're also re-upping and it's just, it's crazy to see how the gaming companies are doing all this stuff now. And so, like I said in the beginning, I challenged myself and I went to my local Walmart because I live in Northwest Iowa. It's a lot smaller than the bigger city areas and you know, we might have a couple Walmarts, Walmarts nearby but that's all we had. And uh, during this video, you will see just a couple pictures that I took and how even my Walmart, uh, it still had physical copies and stuff. And it still had a little bit more, but the clearance aisle that we used to have that was full of games that were marked down to $15 and stuff like that is completely gone. There was a few, there was a few games there, not much. Most of them were gone. And even the brand new games were not even there so they mentioned in their video you know you can understand like ps4 games um xbox one games and stuff starting to dwindle out because the new generation is here we have the ps5 we have the xbox series x and everything like that you can see those games being slowly getting faded out because they're they're moving to the next generation but even those games were dwindled completely out the PS5 games were out. Resident Evil 4 Remake came out not even two weeks ago. And when I checked it out, they only had one copy of the game there. They only had one section of the area there. Hell, even like Call of Duty and stuff was not even really stocked. I guess there's recently been a new wrestling game that came out. I don't even think they had any of those there. It was just insane, guys. So after I watched their video and I took the challenge to go look myself, I wanted to do my own video and kind of highlight some of the stuff that they talked about. And, you know, also, also open up the discussion to go with you guys. Now, if you want to check out their video, um, which is a very good one, by the way. I think in 10 days, they hit over 200,000 views. Um, I will have the link to the, their channel and the video itself in the description below. So, make sure you guys go check them out and support a fellow, fellow Iowan YouTubers. So, one of the first things that... Um, <coughs> sorry. Oh, jeez. Okay, I, I'm sorry, I have a, a checklist up here that I wanted to talk about, and I think I'll just go in the orders that they did, and when I watched their videos, I kind of made notes so I myself could have stuff to talk about, because a lot of these videos I do off the top of my head, and it just kind of goes all over the place, which kind of will, because you'll see that with my notes. <coughs> sorry. So one of the first few things they talked about and why this digital era is taking off and why physical media is dying is obviously it is way, way, way cheaper to make a digital game you don't have the production cost of having to make it on a disc you don't have to make a case you don't have to do all this other stuff it is just in the air or I don't even know how you know digital it is the digital handprint is just there you don't have to technically make it a physical version of itself so why does this affect stuff well one they can charge whatever they want for it and that's been kind of one, an ongoing concern of mine and what kind of you know torques me and pisses me off is that it seems like digital games 
cost more than physical games. And they'll tell you this because it's more convenient, it's more easy to have and stuff like that. But it really doesn't make any sense. And a lot of reasons why I like to buy physical games is if I don't keep it for my collection, I can play through it. And then if I want to, I can resell it. And that becomes, that's talking about my first thing I wrote down here was, companies don't make money off old games after they sell them. They want you to buy the new digital versions of them so that way they can keep making money off of you. So if you buy a Nintendo game, an Xbox 360 game, or whatever from Joe Schmo on Macari or eBay, Nintendo and them do not see any money off of that. So how can they change that? Well, they could sell you the new HD collection of an older game so like uh, uh like rob and west were talking about in their video um oh damn my contra game's not working for some reason um i, I want to buy another one well the company will be like well you can buy the digital version of this and you can also buy it spend a little bit more money and get all the other contras with it and that's how they make their money is reselling these and so uh, like a, one I could think off the top of my head, Last of Us, the first one that was on PS3. They remastered it for the PS4. And then they also remastered it again for the PS5. So essentially, you have to buy, You could, if you want the top of the line Last of Us experience, you bought that game probably another two times. And that's how they're making their money off of you, is they're going to make, oh, check it out, we, we made it a little bit better, guys. So now you're going to want it on this one. And then that's just, when we're talking a little bit more about uh, a little bit ago about not having any production costs. So they, a few years back, God, it's, it's probably been a lot longer than that now, maybe a decade or so, they stopped putting manuals into these games. And at first I was like, whatever, you know, it's kind of one of those things. But now after, you know, thinking about memories of opening stuff as a kid and doing all that other stuff, and you being forced to not be able to go run off and play your game right away. You have to spend time with your family. So there you are sitting there talking to everybody, looking at the back of the case, reading the manual, trying to get all the little bits of knowledge you can before you were able to finally sit down and dive into that game. And having the, that, that manual, having that case, having the box, having the poster that came with it. Games used to come with posters and cool little flyers and advertisements and stuff and that. Whipping those out and be like, oh man, look at this, look at this. And just that insane amount of cool stuff that they used to have that came with getting a game. And they don't have to pay for that stuff anymore. They don't have to throw that other stuff in there. Kind of like how cereal and stuff started getting away from putting toys in the boxes. Kids used to love that kind of stuff. But why do it anymore when it's going to cost money? Let's just take the cheap route and just... They don't, the tricks don't even look like fruit anymore, man. They're just little balls. Cheap, cheap, cheap. Let's make this as cheap as possible and not make it awesome. Uh, and then moving on to that, we had the memories, like I just said, the memories of opening stuff as a kid. And opening that Nintendo, opening that Sega Genesis, opening whatever and just being so freaking pumped. And then nowadays with the modern console, since they don't have some of that stuff going for them anymore. You're actually gonna be stuck opening like, and I'm guilty of this, I've given my kids this. They, they open up an envelope, and what's inside is just a little gift card with a game on it. Yeah. I mean, they loved it and stuff. They ran upstairs, they installed it, and they played it and stuff like that, but there didn't seem, and, and it could be nostalgia glasses for me, and stuff like that, but there didn't seem to be as much joy on their face as when I was a kid and I was ripping through that paper, I was opening up that box, and I'm like, oh, you know, and just just straight kid gasming, you know, <laughs> and just just loving everything about it. And they don't have that memory now. They just get the digital card. They go upstairs, they scratch it off, they put the key the key card in or whatever the key code, and then they just throw the card away. There's no point in having it anymore. <sighs> and going along the lines of that and talking about, you know, the, the cons of digital error. Um, I was forced, when God of War Ragnarok, I was forced to buy a digital copy. No, I can't say forced because I could have obviously waited. But when the game came out, I wanted it so bad. I wanted it now and I wanted to play it. 
and I went to Walmart a couple days after it came out. No copies whatsoever. They had PS4 copies, but I want PS5 because guess what? Damn it. I have a PS5. I want the latest version of it. And I talked to the guy at Walmart there, and he said, he said they didn't send us many. He said, I'm sorry. Uh, when I called, I called the one, and then I went to the other one, and the and I went to the other Walmart, and they said, yeah, I think we have a couple. And I showed up, and it was some lady that didn't know any better, and it was PS4 copies. But I talked to the guy in the back who knew more about it, and he said, man, they didn't even send us that many. We got, like, one box. And he said they were gone within a certain amount of time. And I asked, well, do you know when more are going to come? And he goes, no. He said, not anytime soon. This was a day or so after the game came out, and Walmart hadn't even stocked up on a game that came out. That's that's what they – so essentially, and then I was like, well, I want to play this game so bad. So there you go. I was forced to actually go and buy this game digitally on my PS5. And, you know, and I almost had – I was worried that this was going to happen with Resident Evil 4 Remake. That I was going to be forced to buy a digital copy of Resident Evil 4 Remake. So I called Walmart ahead of time. I talked to some guy that knew. And I said, hold a copy for me. And I was able to get it. But it's just something like that. That they're they're not shipping out as many of these games. They're not the physical games anymore. Because they want you to buy the digital version of it. And so moving on with more of the cons of this. So we're running into this issue right now. That we, you know, talking about that with the Wii U shutting off, the Nintendo 3DS shutting off, and these servers are turning off forever, and now you're going to lose the chance to download games you've already purchased. This is horrible, especially if the hard drive or something fails, you will lose that game forever. So people were telling you with the Wii U that you should buy a portable hard drive to hook up to it. So all those games you purchased, you could put onto that hard drive in case something should ever happen to your Wii U. Especially... Yeah, so if you have a Wii U right now and you download a bunch of games on there, you better pray that nothing happens to it, that it doesn't fry, that you don't drop it and it breaks because you know, those games are gone. You will not be able to get those games back because the servers are down. You can't just log back in and go in and re-download them, as far as I know. And they might have ways around this or something that I don't know about, but as far as I know, those games are lost now. So if you want to play that games, you know what you have to do? You either had to buy the physical copy, which they don't make that much of anymore. I'm, I'm talking more in the future with these newer consoles. But if you want to play those Wii U games, you're going to have to get a Switch. Or get your Switch out. And then you know what you're going to have to do then? You're going to have to download it again onto your Switch. And that's what they're doing. They're banking on you having to pay two to three times for the same game. Now, we've all played that stupid game of Skyrim. And I'm guilty of it. I think I own Skyrim on several different consoles. But I love the game so much, and they keep roping me in every time. I think I have it on 360. I have it on PS3. I have it on PS4. I got a, a copy of it on PS5, and I actually have a PS VR version of it. So they're banking on you having to buy this. So how? here's how they do it. They close the servers. They shut the shit off. So then you're forced to buy it digitally on something else. All right, going on here. And um, so... One of the things about digital games that are very nice is, yes, now if you go to Walmart, they talked about this in their video, the physical games are gone. But guess what's full, guys? The digital card area. Because it's just, it's packed full. Uh, you can get the digital cards. There's no issues there. And digital games are nice for the, the reason of instant gratification of having it and much easier to pull up. And with all the live subscriptions now, I'm not going to lie. Uh, the, the one thing I you know that I see different with gaming off the grid is I like having physical copies of the game, yes. But over the years, I have moved more towards emulation. If there is a game I want to play that I don't need right now, I have it on my RetroPie. Uh, I, as you can see, this is my Nintendo 64 collection. It isn't very big. As of right now, I have a couple more loose copies over there. That's just the rental ones. But I do have more games. But these are the ones I like. If for some reason I want to play Perfect Dark, which I don't have over there, which I've done in the live stream, it's on my Retro Pie. Do I have to have it here taking up space? No. But those are games from like my childhood that I love that I want to play at different other times. Um, so, but to have the di the actual like PlayStation Network, Xbox Game Pass, and stuff, and having a lot of these older games and stuff on there, it is nice to be able to be like, you know what? Uh, like Netflix and stuff like that, just kind of scoping through there and being like, I haven't seen, you know, Happy Gilmore in a while. 
I haven't seen this in a while. I'm going to I'm going to watch this or I'm going to download uh Black Ops 2, Far Cry 3, or whatever, because I really want to play those again. And here they are. Oh, they're on their Game Pass, so I'm going to download them and play them. I don't have to be like, oh, well, I don't have that game. Um, I guess I'm going to buy it and wait two weeks for it to come. And by the time that happens, or it's not usually two weeks. I'm sorry, that's a little dramatic. Maybe a week or a week and a half. Um, but by the time they would actually probably come, are you still going to even want to play it anymore? I might be over it. So it is nice about that with the digital stuff. Um, let's see here. Oh, yeah, this one too. And uh, for some reason, I have noticed though that Walmart has really like up their games on DVDs and Blu-rays and stuff. They seem to have a lot of that stuff, which I don't get. you think the video game section would be a lot more to focus in on. I mean, I haven't bought a DVD and Blu-ray in forever. And the last ones I did buy our Blu-ray were the Star Wars movies. And that was like, well, I don't need to now because I have Disney+. Plus, So I can watch any of the Star Wars movies I want on Disney+. Plus. Same with some of those other things. I mean, it's just, why, that, that, that was, that's what kind of blew my mind about that. And that's what kind of, some, you know, I agree with, I'd rather have this stuff digitally. Because these DVDs aren't even worth what they're printed on and stuff like that. And it's actually cheaper to rent a DVD are the rent a movie that you're probably only gonna watch like once or twice every few months than it is to, to buy it. So what's the, I don't even know what a DVD is brand new anymore, 15, 20 bucks. So they were talking about that and why would I pay that much when I could just pay maybe three or four dollars to rent it on Amazon or something like that? Why spend the 20 to watch it once every year when I could just, you know, and even the digital copies of movies seem to be cheaper than actually buying them, which is the exact opposite of video games. So, like, if you would want to go on to your PlayStation or, or something like that now, I think, what did I look at a while back? I think I wanted to buy a copy of Black Ops or Modern Warfare 2 or something like that, and they wanted, like, 40 freaking dollars for it digitally. And a game is going on, you know, 15, 20 years old. Why? Because they know people want to buy it. So I wait for the sales. The sales don't come. And it comes to the point where I really want to play the game. So then it's like, well, then I'm going to have to be forced to buy it digitally. And that's what I get to, I get about that. Uh, and one of the last things to talk about. Uh, the physical versus uh, digital debation. Debation. That's a debate. <laughs> debation sounds really bad. <laughs> Uh, they can make, uh, so if you have a physical copy of a game, they can't alter it. They can't change it unless they make you download DLC or a patch or an update or something. So let's say down the road, you love this game so much. And then they decide that, well, we can't, that part of the game is polit politically incorrect now and we can't do that. So if you have a digital variation of a game, they could probably just change whatever they want. If you're getting a remake of it and stuff like that. They can alter it. Where if you own the physical one, they can't really touch it, guys. So a lot of games nowadays you can't play digitally unless you're online. And that's becoming a big thing too is now uh, a lot of these games you used to just be able to pop in and play. Now you might go, okay, I want to play this game. And you might load it up and then you can't even play it because you have to download an update first. Or like you said there, you have to. they can change whatever they want to. And it's just not... Not worth it, man. So, in closing, we we all knew this day was going to come, and, I, and we talked about that in Gaming Off the Grid, and a few other people have talked about that. We knew that the, the physical age is dying, and pretty soon everything's going to be digital. And we, we know that. They're selling consoles now that you can't even put discs in. They're doing all this stuff. They're, they're trying everything to make sure that you cannot do this anymore. They don't want you to have the physical copies of games. So what's that going to do for the rest of us? One, it's either going to make this stuff go up way in value because down the road you won't even be able to get it anymore. Or two, they're just going to, yeah, everything's going to be, you're going to own 20 different variations of a game all on different stuff. Now, like I said in the beginning, I'm kind of a mixed bag on it. I have games... I have physical and I have digital games. I was forced to get God of War Ragnarok and digital. But I was able to get Resident Evil, 4, Res Resident Evil Resident Evil 4 Remake 
on physical. A lot of the games I do keep. Oop, I tooted. Hope that didn't get on the mic. Uh, a lot of the physical stuff I do own as games from my childhood that I like to play or games that I got later on in life that I enjoy to play. So I will keep the physical copy of that in case. But it is nice to have these because, oh, I guess I can go on and add this last little point. If you do have to resell the stuff, you have, an un, you have a sudden expense come up, car problems, something like that, something wrong with your house, and you have to sell this stuff to get some money to do this, you can do that. You can't sell a digital copy of a game. You you can't. So, I mean, that is one more perk about physical stuff is if you would have to resell it for some reason to make money, you can. All right, we just hit 20 minutes, and I dragged this on long enough. Like I said earlier in the video, uh, thank you, Gaming Off the Grids, for this awesome topic. Uh, it's been a while since we've really talked about this. Um, and I want to thank everybody for watching this video and supporting this channel. Make sure you go check out Gaming Off the Grid and support your, support my fellow Iowans. Um, and also, make sure you comment below what your thoughts are on this. Are you a digital or physical person? Which one do you prefer? And also, what are like some of your debates on why you think one is better than the other? Because I'd, I'd like to talk to you about. I'd like to talk to you about it. I just hope you guys all have a great day, um, a great weekend. Happy Easter. Um, if you watch this after, after Easter, happy next holiday. <laughs> uh, thank you, guys. Have yourself a great day.